what's going on y'all we are back today to talk about saturday's episode of iyanla um i think it's uh six kids five baby daddies something like that listen i was debating about whether or not i was even going to do this video y'all know how i am with reviewing iyanla i kind of just do it when the episode moves me um like uh when the mitchell brothers were on but um i figured why not okay we'll just talk about it a little bit we're not gonna go toe to toe blow for blow round for round but we'll just talk about it all right um so the young lady that wrote iyanla is i think she says she was 32 okay and she has six kids one of which is a newborn basically that was uh i think a month old and all of her children are being raised by her mother right um so she comes into the house of healing sits down and talks with iyanla and just gives her the lowdown on how she got to this point how she ended up with six children five different baby daddies and how her mother ended up with the kids so she started out you know she had her two children they were with her and i think she got like um she got laid off or something she had a whole bunch of circumstances happening in her life to where she was just really unstable you know um yet she continued to have children the one incident she mentioned is she was actually raped okay and one of her children was a product of that rape she also experienced some childhood trauma when she was 11 years old where i think about five guys had sex with her in one day so she she somehow ended up at this house some neighborhood boy told her that she would become a woman by doing this by having sex with all these guys okay so clearly she was not um she wasn't getting what she needed as far as you know her home life to the extent that she knew better than to do something like that um and then we later also found out that <clears throat> her mother caught her with a boy somewhere around one of you know somewhere around that real young age her mother caught her with a boy her mother called <clears throat> her father about it and her father got on her about that and also like physically checked her area um to see or verify that she had act that she was sexually active or something like that so again there was just a lot going on with this this girl when she was a young child that shouldn't have been going on and we also learned that the mother it was a pattern the mother had experienced some of the same uh well not not she not the same but the mother didn't um get what she needed growing up either because the mother was a product of a um extramarital relationship that her father was having so her father never acknowledged her okay and the mother just did the best she could raising her daughter so of course that created you know or um deficiencies occurred in the mother-daughter relationship as a result of the trauma that the mother experienced as well as because of the trauma that the daughter experienced now the mother said because Iyanla was like, well, how did you end up 
with all of her kids and the mother was like she just sent them to me and Yana's like well if you don't take them she can't send them okay so let's just talk about the young lady what I got really was she was having she was having babies okay because she was trying to um she was trying to make something happen in her life that hadn't happened before okay and um what i mean by that is she was it was do-overs it's like and i it, it was do-overs she was she messed it up the first time so i'm gonna do it over again and get it right this time mess it up the second time so i'm gonna do it over and get it right this time mess it up again i'm gonna do it over i'm gonna do it over i'm gonna do it over and so on but one thing for sure two things for certain in this life you don't get do-overs like that not in life like that without this ain't super mario brothers you know what i mean you can't reset the console and just start over with no real life consequences okay so <clears throat> she was trying to make something happen that just wasn't going to happen the way she was doing it because she was having all these kids knowing that she wasn't stable okay and she the girl mentioned that she was trying to prove to her mother that she could be stable and that she could take care of the kids and she said she had done it periodically but that's not stable okay because shit you with kids there is no i can pay the rent this month but not for the next two months um you know what I mean? So it's it's consistency. She was she wasn't able to provide that stability on a consistent basis for the kids. So she just kept sending them to her mother's house. Now the last baby was by a married man. Okay. And she got really, really um upset when Iyanla kept bringing that up like you know clearly that that is something that is a trigger for her but i'm gonna say i think that she got so upset about that because she's ashamed of it and she knows especially after sitting with iyana and talking to her and and um getting her in touch with a lot of the things that you know like getting her to recognize her pattern of behavior after sitting with Iyanla through that and then for Iyanla to again bring up the fact that <clears throat> the man she had her last baby by <clears throat> is married she it, it just it just really got her in a way to where she was like damn I really fucked this up like my I think she in her mind she was thinking well damn shit i know i fucked up damn why you gotta keep telling me that's just what i took from it <clears throat> so and iana said you know this this man can't um he can't give you no house he can't give you no support he can't be with you in a relationship because he's married and which is all true so I just think that the girl was just like, well, God damn. I mean, shit, I know all that, but I wasn't really trying to keep it real with myself. I was trying to live this fantasy that I had in my head that, yeah, I'm going to have this baby with this married man, but he's married. So that means that he's um, maybe one day he'll separate from his wife and then he'll be with me and then we'll have a family or something it was something in her mind that was having her think you know it was gonna be all good 
So they played the musical Chairs of Life. It wouldn't be Iyanla without one of these types of exercises. And they, Iyanla was the music. Here we go around the issues of life, the issues of life, the issues of life. Some shit Iyanla was doing. And um, they were just circling around a set of six chairs all with different issues on the chair. And once they sat down, they had to um, reconcile with whatever was on the paper. I don't remember specifically what that whole encounter was or what that whole, um, what each emotion was or whatever. So we not gonna talk about that, but one thing Iyanla did say when she hit the nail on the head was she was like, you can have a baby, but can you mother a child? And I think <clears throat> the reason why that struck me is because as women, I feel like we kind of assume or take for granted you can't turn here girl um we assume that because we biologically like we can bear a child that automatically means that we can be a mother to the child you know, regardless of our circumstances. And um, I, I, I don't, I don't say that to be judgmental, but I just say that because I, I really think it's a reality that once you, as a woman, discover that you're carrying a child, no matter what, it's just instinct to feel as though you have everything you need to provide for the child all of the emotional resources and the emotional stability to provide everything you that child is going to need and i just think that's just human nature but once the reality of being a parent sets in like once once the baby is here and you real and you realize that that is some real shit then you're faced with a choice okay do i what do i do like do i continue to struggle to raise this child even though i know i i really can't like i don't i can't support the child financially i i don't have um the, the father's not in the baby's life do i continue to do that or do I give the baby to my mother who I know the baby will be better off with? And I'm speaking specifically about this young lady, like, you know, what was going on in her mind. Okay, because at one point she was stripping, um, you know, and she, she like, I just, I really think she probably was just like, let me just get a baby to, to my mother where I know the baby going to be better off and I can get back on my feet. And she just never took the time to stop and really realize that she was just making the situation worse by continuing to have more and more kids. So, um... It looked like at the end of the show that they got something out of it. I can't remember what the ending, you know, like on Iyanla, they do the the um, the little ending where they tell, you know, give an update about the people that was on the show. I can't remember exactly what that said, but I know that the 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 girl says she got what she needed or something like that but i think you know what i think if i'm not mistaken y'all leave it in the comments did it say that 
um, she was still in the relationship with the married man. I think it said that, you know. But my takeaway from this episode was that, like I said earlier, you don't get do-overs in life. You don't get do-overs like that in life. You 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 have to learn from your experiences and not take for granted that you could just hit the reset and everything will be cool. You, you, you can't do that. And um, I've seen that happen, you know, in my life. I've seen it happen in other people's lives that are close to me. Not, um, it's not situation specific as far as like what this young lady went through, but just life issues in general where I've seen, um, you know, people trying to rewrite history and and get do-overs where that's just not going to happen, okay? So, that's enough about Iyanla Fix My Life, all right? Um, there was, there was no episode of power over the weekend so i'll be back this coming weekend with the episode review of power for episode eight um and then of course rest in peace to miss aretha franklin the one and only queen of soul like i can't even tell you you know i mean what do you say <laughs> What do you say about Aretha Franklin? Like, she was the it. Like, everything. When you talk about Queen, child, please. We wouldn't have a queen of hip-hop soul without Aretha Franklin, okay? Um, her indelible legacy. Um, the mark she left. Not just on music, but just on culture, on, on culture, American culture, period. Like, all of her many tons and tons of hit songs, hit after hit after hit, and the fact that I just remember as a kid, I was introduced to Aretha Franklin um, through her voice on... Um, a different world when she sang the opening credits um on a different world and no 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 i had already i can't remember exactly but i had i was familiar with who aretha franklin was and i know that when i was um because i watched a different world all the time and it was just crazy you know how she connected her self with that like our generation through her voice on a different world if y'all know what I mean like I knew her as a soul singer like you know rock steady my shit um respect of course she that was um a Otis Redding's um song in, initially but she took it and um shit <laughs> I love Otis but shit that was Aretha song if you ask me so, um, and then her song with George Michael, Knew You Were Waiting, and uh, Riding on the Freeway, her hair in that video, child, let me tell y'all something, her hair in that video, I was like, yes, only a woman with a voice like that can pull off a hair, uh, a hairstyle like that so <clears throat> anyway rest in peace to aretha franklin we appreciate her we definitely appreciate her and what she late what she gave us and what she left us with so um so yeah y'all that's it i have just pulled up here behind this raggedy ass lift driver who don't know where they're trying to go but um 
I'm getting ready to hop on this train so I can make it to work. All right. And I will catch y'all um, in the next video. Okay. And if this is your first time, welcome. Okay. And go ahead, like this video. Or thumbs it down, shit. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Fuck. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Comment below. Subscribe. All right. And I will catch y'all in the next video.